Hello friends, in my previous lecture I discussed about the first and important stage of translation process that is initiation. We know that when mRNA uh, is get processed in case of eukaryotic cell or formed in case of prokaryotic cell and generally subjected to translation process after binding of uh, ribosome at a start colon. Okay? So in initiation we see that when mRNA is produced it generally have uh, two different type of colon. First at 5 prime end mRNA show AUG or a start colon while at a 3 prime end mRNA have stop colon which may be UAA or UAG or UGA. Any one of, from these three can serve as a stop colon. So initially ribosome uh, small cell unit recognize start colon and get attached on mRNA. Okay, the small subunit of the prokaryotic ribosome is 30S type. Now, large subunit uh, get attached to the small subunit on the start colon, which complete the formation of 70S initiation complex. After formation of 70S initiation complex, uh, newly uh, new amino acid is uh, come into the picture uh, with the help of tRNA. tRNA get attached to the P and A site, two different tRNAs uh, bring two different amino acids. And then after formation of first peptide bond, ribosome can move towards the terminator colon. And the process in which ribosome move from start colon to stop colon on mRNA in 5 prime to 3 prime direction is called as elongation. Elongation comprises all the reactions uh, uh, which uh, bring formation of first peptide bond till the formation of last peptide bond. Okay? So in today's lecture, I'm going to discuss the second stage of the translation that is elongation. Okay? Uh, the rate of translation uh, elongation is uh, very slow when we compare or very less when we compare it with the rate of DNA replication or transcription. Replication take place at a rate of 1000 nucleotide per second by DNA polymerase while translation take place uh, with the rate of 15 amino acid per second with the help of a ribosome. Okay? So in this uh, lecture I am going to focus on important events that occur at the time of elongation in prokaryotic cell. Initially we know that uh, for elongation purpose a special type of a factors is always needed and that factors are called as EF or elongation factor. Prokaryotic cell requires three different type of elongation factors uh, at the time of elongation process. Okay, These factors are EFTU, EFTU uh, the first factor, then uh, EFTS second factor while EFG is third factor. Okay, so initially at the start of elongation, a tRNA, uh, we know that this is the hairpin model of a tRNA having 5 prime end and 3 prime end. 3 prime end of the tRNA always have amino acid attached to it. All 20 different type of amino acid which is present in the prokaryotic cell uh, found attached to the uh, specific tRNA. Okay, so the tRNA which have amino acid on the 3 prime end is called charged tRNA. Okay, or amino acylated tRNA and such tRNA bring the amino acid in the process of elongation. But uh, this tRNA alone cannot do the job of transferring amino acid. The tRNA require help of EFTU, GTP uh, transcription elongation factor. Okay, this EFTU protein or factor only get activated after binding with GTP. So this complex EFTU GTP complex is called binary complex. It is the active form of this translation factor. Okay, when this EFTU GTP combined with a trans uh, tRNA, then it will going to form ternary complex. Okay, so binary complex convert into ternary complex when this translation factor get associated with the tRNA. Here I have sh shown the tRNA with an anticolon loop and this tRNA having amino acids which is attached now with EFTU GTP complex. 
and it is nothing but the ternary complex. Now this tRNA is ready to enter in the elongation process. That means this protein or this factor play important role of transferring tRNA on the A site of the ribosome. We know that during the initiation, first tRNA come directly in P site with amino acid called uh, formal methionine. Okay, but now all other tRNA directly come into A site or acceptor site or amino acid tRNA site. Okay, so this tRNA is then transported to A site by this factor. When this tRNA get attached to the A site by pairing of codon and anticodon, which is a complementary base pairing, after binding of the tRNA, the large subunit have uh, a site. Uh, due to the action of that particular site, this GTP get hydrolyzed. Okay, and due to hydrolysis of the GTP of EFTU, uh, new complex or new factor is produced called EFTU GDP complex. And due to hydrolysis of GTP, this factor release from tRNA. So here you can see the tRNA get attached to the A site while this factor is now free. EFTU GDP. What is the difference between these two factors? They are same, only the difference is that GTP is replaced with GDP due to loss of one phosphate molecule. Okay, this happened due to hydrolysis of GTP. Now, this EFTU GTP is inactive form, okay, and it cannot bind again to the uh, tRNA until this GDP is replaced by GTP. And the replacement role is carried out by this factor, EFTS factor, elongation factor TS. Okay, this factor replace EFTU GDP, EFTU GDP with GTP. Okay, this is the factor which catalyzes the reaction in which this GDP leaves EFTU and GTP get attached to EFTU. Okay, after conversion of inactive to active form. This EFTS again uh, recycle and ready to uh, bind to the another EFTU GDP complex. So what is the main action of EFTS? EFTS initially remove the GDP from EFTU, then it get attached to the EFTU which lead to formation of EFTU EFTS complex and finally this EFTS is replaced with the GTP. Okay, and once this GDP is replaced with GTP, this EFTU now get activated, okay, while EFTS recycle. Now this EFTU is again ready in active form uh, for binding to the tRNA and bringing it into the elongation process. Okay, so two cycles are simultaneously uh, run uh, during the elongation process. First is this cycle, which is EFTU cycle, EFTU GTP cycle, while second is EFTS cycle. Okay, and due to this cycling process, uh, this factor is continuously get activated and continuously transfer new tRNA on the A site of ribosome. This is the first substage of elongation. Okay, now in the second stage, uh, peptide bond is produced. Okay, peptide bond is produced in between three amino acids, which is uh, three or four or chain of the amino acid, which is present on the uh, P side tRNA and the amino acid, which is present on the newly entered A side tRNA. Okay. We know that in between two different amino acids in protein, peptide bond are present. Okay. This bond is formed and due to formation of this bond, this chain from P side tRNA now shift on the A side tRNA. Okay, here I show you three amino acids while A side tRNA have single amino acid and due to formation of this bond, now A side tRNA have single chain of four amino acid while now P side tRNA is free to leave the ribosome. Okay, this is the second substage of elongation process. So how exactly this peptide bond is formed? We know that uh, generally the amino acids which is present on the P uh, side tRNA is like this. Okay, uh, 
the amino acid having central carbon atom hydrogen r side chain carboxy terminal and amino terminal while the amino acid which is present on a side trna also have similar structure okay now carboxy or c terminal of the p side amino acid uh, get attached with n terminal of a side amino acid so c terminal of p side amino acid get attached with n terminal of a side amino acid that means this amino acid is present on the trna of the a side while this amino acid is present on the trna of the p side uh, how exactly the peptide bond formed peptide bond formation is the type of condensation reaction what is condensation reaction the reaction in which water molecule come out okay the reaction in which water molecule uh, leave is generally called as condensation reaction how exactly it happened uh, this oh group and this one hydrogen from nh2 come out in the form of water so now the bond produce like this carbon hydrogen r side chain nh2 this carbon double bond o com combined with n and one hydrogen remain on the amino terminal so this carbon hydrogen r side chain and cooh okay this is the peptide bond which is produced between uh, p side and a side amino acid and due to formation of this peptide bond chain get shifted from p to a side okay so after formation of peptide bond structure look like this okay this is the stage called peptide bond formation stage okay this is the sub two uh, stage of elongation now the last stage begin and it is called as translocation what happen in the translocation due to transferring uh, peptide uh, amino acid sequence from from p to a side now this trna is free now ribosome move one colon towards 3 prime end the movement of ribosome take place from 5 prime to 3 prime end and every time ribosome move one colon towards 3 prime end okay and this movement of the ribosome is uh, completed with the help of action of e of g factor that is elongation factor g this factor require energy of hydrolysis of gtp okay that means this factor is also example of gtp is in which this factor hydrolyze gtp into gdp plus pi and due to hydrolysis of gtp energy is released and that energy is used by the ribosome for the movement purpose and this movement of the ribosome one colon uh, movement of the ribosome is called translocation and due to movement what happen due to movement of the ribosome one colon ahead the trna from the p side now come on e side while trna from the a side enter in the p side okay look it carefully due to forward movement of the ribosome the position of the site change and due, due to that the free trna from the p side now come on the e side while the trna from the a side enter in the p side a side become free okay here i have shown you a site become free for accepting uh, next trna okay while this a site trna now on the p site while the p site trna on the e site and we know we know that e is the exit site from the exit site this trna can leave or can uh, fall off from the uh, ribosome okay now this a site is free for accept, accepting next trna and this trna is again bring in the a site with the help of e of tu translation factor okay this is the factor which play role of transferring new trna on the a site similarly this reactions continue okay what happen when the new trna come this trna leave exit when the new trna come with amino acid this chain again transfer amino acids from p side to a side by formation of peptide bond by this reaction okay now this chain is transfer on the a side 
again ribosome move uh, one colon forward with the help of EFG. Okay, similar reaction take place continuously till ribosome reach termination colon or stop codon or nonsense codon. When this nonsense codon come in the way of ribosome at A site, none of the tRNA have anti codon complementary to the uh, this nonsense codon and due to which the translation process uh, get terminated. Okay. In my next lecture, I am going to explain uh, termination of the translation process in detail. Thank you.